All right, friends, welcome to Deeper Dive. We're so glad that you're here. We have a, a great series that we are coming into and excited about this because I think it really challenges us to think about the world that we live in. Uh, how do we thrive in a world that's different from us? that you know wants to cancel some of the things that we like or feel like are important to us and uh, i think the biggest thing juni as we're looking at this is is the world is not our home right we have to kind of establish that and if we if we are so invested in this world that we really forget about that that's a real big problem and that we're not of this world and we should expect that but we still want to understand and work through how do we navigate with our culture how do we teach our kids right yeah. how do we um, become an influence in our world where we're not just critical but we're right. constructive yeah. in in making this happen and so we want to we want to take some time to talk about that together and answer your questions and in and in some ways, uh, this is this is really challenging, folks. And I think we're, we're going to have to exercise grace with each other and uh, say, because I might think about something or say something a little bit differently than the way you would think about it. And so uh, even doing this here is uh, a good challenge for us to say, okay, let's walk through this together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our first question, Pastor Aubrey, is how do you develop empathy? Okay. And why is the cult cancel culture so bad? Okay, let's do the first one first. Okay. I, I'll, I'll grab a hold of that. Uh, yeah. How do we develop empathy? And uh, because that's kind of what Pastor Mark talked about is, is how do we grab a hold of that and, and uh, really have it not divide into groups where we say there's you people and us people and we do that whole thing. And I think there's a few things that we want, want to talk to you about that with that is that we want to recognize that their people's opinions uh, I can take some time, I can think about them, I can hear them, and uh, here's the thing that I've learned about most everybody. We have high opinion of our opinions. Yes. <laughs> uh, I really think that my opinions are good. Judy, you believe your opinions yes. to be good. And so I think understanding that to think that it is actually an opinion yeah. on some of these things, right? And in the how we do stuff. And so I might, I might have to take some time to hear and to understand what you're saying, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And if I'm so entrenched in my opinions on things, I'm not talking about truth about who Jesus is, but how we do stuff and everything that, yeah. that's really imp uh, a really important step in developing empathy, listening to people, being quick to listen. Um, some people have different experiences that are not my struggle. Right. Yes. And, and to take the time to acknowledge that just because I have, a, have had a particular life that's done this way, right. somebody else may have a completely different experience and you know you've heard the shoes about walking in other people's footsteps and and not having walked in their shoes and that's one thing um you know the bible talks about considering others better than ourselves and that whole humility piece is really important if i'm going to yeah. develop empathy uh, one of the things that i've done over the years is when i disagree with somebody or i feel hate yeah rising yeah. up right yeah happens yeah oh uh, god would you give me your perspective on that person yeah and that and that's yeah. really that sense and and uh i i think the last thing that that i would want to say on this is this there is a lost grace that we have mm -hmm. about assuming the best about people yes yeah. most of the time what we do is somebody's opinion is different than mine i immediately assume the worst about them and if i don't listen to them if i don't you know give a little bit of grace to them uh i'm going to be at that place where i have no capacity to develop empathy for them and then in a culture that is pushing against me i'm actually cut off and i'm ineffective in the culture that i have and so i think that's a big one uh why is the cancel culture bad Yes. Was the, the second question. Uh, okay, I, I think there are a few things in this. One of them is, is this, and I don't hear people talking about this, is I think we grow mm -hmm. by having different views and iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And I think if we just cancel stuff that people disagree with, we, uh, we don't get into things and we say, okay, why is that wrong? Why do I see that? And, mm -hmm. and what? we're just going to cut everything off that we don't agree with. And there's no sort of working it out together. There's yeah. no, well, okay, I, here's what I think, here's what you think, and we, we work this out. And I'm talking societally, how we, right. we work out. And over, over time, it's how we grow. We right. grow by having different perspectives, by working things out. And, and a lot of it is, 
this whole identity politics that Pastor Mark talked about, he didn't really explain it all that much, but this is the way I would see it. And Judy and I had this conversation beforehand. <laughs> it was, okay, I'm white, you're brown. Uh, I come, my descendants come from Russia, yours come from South, South India, India yeah. right? Um, you watch cricket, I watch hockey, yeah. right? And so your husband did explain cricket to me. Yeah. <laughs> I think he maybe has to explain it to me a few more times, right? And so what's with these cricket people? Like, you know, all these cricket people, and they yeah. have these cricket times, and they get together, and they spend yeah. all Sunday playing cricket, they and they got, like, cricket things they got going on, yeah. and suddenly there's there's all these things that divide us, Yeah. right? And I can begin to think of you as that person. Right. And I think as we have this whole identity politics, this is, this is I think, folks, incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. And especially as it comes into the church, we have to think differently than that. Yeah. Because the Bible says there is neither male nor female or slave or free, which is you know what was happening then, or Jews or Gentiles. In other words, right. that whole ethnic thing is that we put Jesus above mm -hmm. and we put our Christianity above to say, it's a brother and a sister. Right. It's though, and and I think as we do that, there's something that unites us that we're one faith, one hope, one Lord, and uh, we really have to grab a hold of this because I think the way our society is going is incredibly dangerous mm -hmm. and it's divisive. And I'll, I'm just going to say this: I think it's a strategy of the enemy. Yeah. I really do believe that it's a strategy yeah. enemy to divide people yeah. rather than to say there is so much that we have in common as believers or so much we have in common with other human beings. Right. And if all we do is put people up in categories, I just think it's incredibly dangerous. Right. And in cancel culture too, you're not just, um, or in that uh, situation, you're not just uh, discrediting what that person said or did in that moment. Yeah. You're taking away their whole credibility as an yeah. individual, right? Like you're oh, shunning yeah. them completely um, yeah. and not even giving them that opportunity for grace like we heard today, right? Like yeah. uh, no grace, no forgiveness. Um, and like Pastor Mark said, it was a really great point. He said, who, who of us haven't sinned, right? Like who right. hasn't done wrong? Um, so it's really important to remember that, yeah, we, we may not agree with what they say, but instead of just getting getting all hurrah in that moment, yeah. let's just give them a chance to, you know, clear up. Maybe it's some other influence that caused them to say that, or maybe they didn't think through what they said. Right? Absolutely. Let's I've, hear them I've out. I've always, right? I've, I'm, I'm, I've, there's a lot of things that I've said that I haven't thought through. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and I, I think in part, I want to acknowledge this, yeah. is when people are, kind of dealing with this, a, a lot of people who would have that understanding, their motives might actually be good, mm -hmm. right? They might yeah. want to have like, you know, I understand tolerance is not a great way of thinking about it. The heart behind it is they, they want people to make sure that, that they're feel cared about. Right. And so even, I think as we look at that, even to say people who have that understanding of life, mm -hmm. um, their motives might be actually good motives. Yeah. And to just acknowledge that and say, hey, that's the way it is. I just think how we're going about it as believers, as Christians, yeah. there's actually a better way to do it right. where we can make that happen. Yeah. So one of our questions is, as a Christian, when someone in the workplace tells them that they're being intolerant, what can they say in response to their comment? Okay. Uh, first of all, you don't want to react. I mean, that's the biggest thing. And, and I, I think just, as we, just like we talked about, it, what's the heart behind what people are saying? Like if this person says you're being intolerant, they could be just, you know, sp spewing some stuff that they've heard. But in, in that moment, what you want to do is you want to find common ground with that person. And, and you want to say, hey, you know, clearly I don't want to be intolerant. I, you know, I would want to show love towards everybody. Uh, how do you see that and engage them with questions? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, there, there would be, if people are really wanting to, to make things work between two people, you, what you want to do is you want to go back to the common things that they agree on right. together. And, uh, you know, your language might be different, your, all those other things might be different. And I think having conversations where you really ask questions and then listen, right. that's the biggest thing. Because that statement can just set you off. And then you can cancel them and they can cancel you and everybody can just be mad at each other. Right. And you've actually blown the ability to be Jesus to them. So right. ask good questions, listen, see if you can find common ground. And you know what? It's actually okay to disagree with people. Yeah. 
And I, I think one of the big things that that I would want to work with people that I, especially at work where you have a, you want to have a good relationship with people is to know and to model over the years. And this is like a long-term thing is that I can disagree with you and still love you. Yeah. I think it's yeah. huge for us. And, and to say that uh, is one thing, but to actually live that out, I think that's where the grace of God comes in. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you in your workplace um, not to get involved in foolish and stupid arguments, right. but to engage people and to love them. And we talked about empathy at the beginning and to really empathize with them. You're not changing your perspective on what's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're trying to draw out of them and get to a place where you as two people can have a conversation and not have all the political garbage around it. Throw that away. You're talking to a person who God loves and who you want to have an influence for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, the next question is, if you have been offended in a situation, so not being yeah. called out, but if you're offended in a situation, how do you handle it uh, in terms of forgiveness? Do you do silent forgiveness or do you say something to the person that offended you? Okay. Um, I, I think there's a really good point behind this is that we've mashed some things together when we've talked about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness is, at its core, you and God dealing with a situation. And I think that's incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And the, the answer to that second part is, is really you put it aside and you and God deal with it. And, and some of it is, you know, acknowledging the hurt that it's real, uh, you know, and, and uh, I, I think there is, I, what Pastor Mark said in, in the uh, backstage is, you know, there's a maturity that we want to get to. Uh, but you know what, no matter how, and, and no matter how mature we are, sometimes we do get hurt yeah. by things. And because sometimes it's because we have our feelings sticking out, yeah. right? And we don't actually need to be hurt. We just, we got issues, right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's because we're legitimately had things happen to us that are hurtful. And then we have to deal with those hurtful things. And uh, we forgive them by, by doing this thing with God where Jesus came, he died for us, and he took all of that hurt upon himself. And so we give it to Jesus. And, and I think there's two things. Man, I could talk like 20 minutes on this. Mm -hmm. ah. um, forgiveness means not only that I'm letting people off the hook, right which is what you're doing when you forgive them you're saying god i'm giving you this thing i, right. I can't do this you're also dealing with your emotions on this mm -hmm. and some people get jammed up because they think if i have emotions yeah. then i haven't forgiven yeah and i think that's, that's true. Uh, this is so 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 crucial even if you've forgiven by a choice to say, God, I'm working this together with you. I give it out. Sometimes I need somebody to pray with me over it so right. I can just really let it go. But then you, your emotions keep coming back and you just keep to keep reminding yourself, you know what? I, in the middle of this, I still have these emotions. Jesus comes and the cross comes in the middle of my emotions and my decision. Right. And that's what this is Easter season, guys. That is what Easter is all about, is Jesus doing what we can't do. Right. And eventually what happens is our emotions sort of die away and everyone sort of pops back up again. You think, yeah. nope, 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 forgiven. Yeah. And then when that process is done, then reconciliation is like totally the next step, completely divided from forgiveness. Right. And usually if you've really forgiven somebody, it kind of just happens and you don't have to do this big thing. Right. Because I've been in situations where you have where somebody said, you know, I really hated you and you did their art. And by the time they're finished doing their pre-forgiveness thing, yeah. then I'm offended. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're just like, like, oh, that's what you thought. Oh, about that's what you thought of me, right? Well, I think you still think that about me. And it would have been just better for them to deal with their issue yeah. and let it go. Yeah. That would have yeah. been like perfect. And almost always, that's the right thing to do. Yeah make that happen that's good um so the other and this is a point and then a question there yeah. so it i think it is important to forgive but it is also important to name what injustice has happened yeah. and seek to make things right so what does reconciliation look like okay. between the church and the people who have been oppressed by the name in the name of the church so when it comes okay. to slavery residential schools should we just say sorry or should we as a church work towards reconciliation and do we have our, or do we have a responsibility in this issue? Okay, really great question. 
I am not going to do this justice with a quick answer, but here we go. I think absolutely there are things that when we have done things wrong, uh, and we as in the church, right? right? When we have been a part of doing things wrong, I, I think it, it's incredibly tricky because you look at this, first of all, you acknowledge it. Right. You just say, hey, that was wrong. And I mean, I have, um, my, my wife is Métis, and so I, I have a little bit of a, a window because I've talked to some of my relatives who have been in residential schools, and uh, I had no idea. Like, honestly, I was like a clueless white guy and, and incredibly difficult. And so acknowledging it, understanding it is really, really important to do that, to say, yep, yeah, that was wrong. Uh, residential schools, what was the other thing you're talking uh, about? Slavery. Slavery, yep. all of those things are, are, are things that are important. Now, there are, again, many different ways of sort of dealing with this. And I, I think in the, in, the, in the Christian context, I'm going to think about it as one-on-one. Right. If I am talking to someone, whether they're Christian or a non-Christian, because I'm not going to think about nationally what we do. Right. It's above my pay grade. <laughs> uh, and I think it might be above everybody's, yes. most everybody's pay grade, yeah. right? Uh, and, and especially when you make grand statements to people. Right. Here it is, is when I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody, help to understand them, have empathy toward them, acknowledge those things that those were wrong, and uh, begin to seek to understand their situation. Right. Uh, you know, I, I'm really big on on listening in that and saying that how do you how do you make up for past stuff? Is you know, yeah. when I have talked with people who have been hurt in in whatever part of that, it's easy for me to say, oh man, that was terrible. Like, you know, that was really bad. And, and you know, there you can have this conversation about what was and everything like that. But I think just personally acknowledging to people yeah. what happened, that it was wrong and that it was hurtful. And then rather than, and then moving to say, okay, so how can I be part of the solution for this? Right. Yeah. And, and part of the solution means how can I be helpful to you as a person to move forward and, and to, uh, be Jesus to that person like right. what would Jesus do in yeah. in this and to, to treat them with dignity uh, to acknowledge those things and to move forward in a way where I see and understand that even though I haven't walked that way uh, I can acknowledge it and I can uh, love them in a way that is honoring to what they've gone through right and sometimes, like you said, Pastor Robert, it's not necessarily where you say everything that you just said in that conversation with them. But part of that acknowledging and listening, you make it a stance that you have in that relationship, right? right? Like, I'm going to choose to be, uh, choose to show them dignity. I'm going to choose to love them this way. Yeah. When they react, maybe I'm going to choose to respond in this way. Yeah. Um, and so those are decisions you make internally to help be Jesus to them, right? You're yeah. not necessarily wanting, sometimes you, you probably don't want to proclaim, I'm going to be Jesus to you. Yes, kind of thing. no, that would not be. <laughs> it's an but, internal thing, yes. really good point. Um, yeah. But sometimes you may have a little bit more. That first part of it, I really liked what you said, where you said, you know, how can I be a solution? Or how can I help yeah. through this, right? And uh, and you're not going to solve all the problems or right. all the hurts that are there, but how can you make an influence in their life that shows that light of Christ? Uh, and then helps that light shine a bit brighter. And it might yeah. be somebody else that comes in and adds to that light as well, right? So, Absolutely. And, yeah. and the Holy Spirit's at work in our lives. And so we want to cooperate with him in these areas that are that are kind of tough, right? When things have happened to people that have been so hurtful and so terrible, uh, it's not our job to fix it. It's our job to love people right. and to walk with them and cooperate yeah. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, just on, we had talked about some uh, um, celebrities in okay. the message as well. Okay. So how can we hold influential people accountable if we don't cancel them? Ah, okay. I, I think, you know, there is a, um, a way of thinking that is, is sort of about the big culture and how do we, you know, make an influence. I, I think we're the biggest influence 
when we love people mm -hmm. and when we do the things that God has called us to do. I, I was listening to, I'll, I'll try to make this concise. Um, I was listening to uh, Vice President Pence's daughter okay. on, I think it was on The View or The Talk or one of these things. And you think, what are you new listening to that? <laughs> I'm very well read on these things. <laughs> and, and, and she was, I thought she was, I actually don't know anything about her other than that little talk. I thought she was brilliant. I thought she said, you know, my dad taught me to, and I'm not necessarily a fan of everything Mike Pence did, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my dad taught me when people were doing things and, and were angry and everything and, and all that stuff, is that is an understanding of this is what it looks like to have a society where you can express these things. Right. And you can have that. And, and I thought, there's something really Christian about that. Mm -hmm is that I am not going to just get angry at that person because they hold a different view from me. I'm going to understand something deeper, that they're expressing something. And, and I don't need to get into this, that we're back and forth on each other and everybody's angry and I'm angry from the Christian side and you're angry from the non-Christian side. And, and I think there's a way that we treat people, right. that we engage with people, that is way more like Jesus engaged with people. Mm -hmm. And I think as you do that, as you practice that, and, and part of it is not just sitting in your keyboard being angry all the time. Right. I, I honestly, folks, I think that is the least helpful thing to do. I actually choose not to. I'm like a political animal. I love this stuff, mm -hmm. right? I choose not to go and watch too much of this stuff mm -hmm. because it gets me all riled up. Right. And it's actually not helpful for me and my influence in the kingdom to be all riled up about stuff and be all angry about those people, right. you know, whoever those people are, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, because I actually want to see people through Jesus' eyes. And, and that means that you can make statements, you can talk about stuff. But I think the biggest thing is where's your heart in this? Right. Yeah. Is, is your heart so stirred up and so angry at those people? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you're actually going to have any influence for good if that's where you are. If you're right. thoughtful about those kind of things, if you ask questions, right. if you move into, I think there's a whole lot of way that we can influence our people. And, and I want to talk about, you know, for our kids as well. Right. We teach them how to look at, just like, you know, that daughter, right. uh, her dad taught her how to see people differently right. than just that person who people have a different view than me and I need to be angry with them. Yeah. And as she was talking anyways, it didn't seem like there's a lot of malice in her heart toward right. other people. There was a lot of love in her heart right. toward other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I like that. Yeah, that's true. And that's all I have for okay. questions today. Well, you know what? It, it's been really interesting. And I would love to hear back your comments on some of these things because we've we've just touched the surface of them uh, and a deeper surface <laughs> as, we, as we've done this because this is obviously a longer conversation. Love to hear from you. And uh, as we go into this series from Pastor Mark, there are going to be things that he said that are going to provoke you and challenge you and poke you. And it's exactly what we want to do. We want to think like Jesus followers. And we want to live like Jesus followers. We want to be able to teach our children how to do that and how to be that. Thanks for joining us in Deeper Dive. Have a great Sunday.